Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So, a lot of blasters have gotten a ton of praise over the years, but none more than the Strife, in my opinion. I think that the Strife is the most beloved blaster ever made at this point. Right up there next to the other two greats, the Jolt and the Retaliator, the Strife is one of the most well-known and loved blasters ever. But there is one that is just as important as the Strife, and just as well known, but unfortunately over the years has kind of slipped into obscurity and you don't really hear about it anymore. I'm talking about the Barricade, the direct predecessor of the Strife, and one of the blasters that I really didn't have any expectations for when I first heard about it, but after getting it and using it, I quickly realized that this is one of the best blasters that Nerf ever made. <laughs> Barricade was a 2010 release out of Hasbro and was one of the last end strike blasters to ever come out. Subsequently, one of the best end strike blasters to ever come out. I'm just realizing that I'm saying that about every single end strike blaster that came out because end strike was so good that there really weren't any bad blasters in the whole series, but I'll get into that in a different video. This blaster is pretty cool, and this genuinely was the original Strife, and this was the original Strife for a lot of modders. I mean, this thing had just as many mods as the Strife back in the day, even though the mechanism is more complicated than the Strife, and in some ways better, in some ways worse, but we'll get into all that in time. My brain saw keeps trying to fall off the shelf. Let's start with the design. The design of the barricade is one of my favorite designs to look at imaginable because it's the Strife. I never actually realized this, but this blaster really is the Strife. Look at this. You look at it for five seconds and you can realize just how similar it is to the Strife. Do you recognize this? Yeah, it's the Strife's battery door. Do you recognize this entire grip and stock and area setup right here? It looks like the Strife. Yes, yeah, stock attachment point. The exact same shape, the exact same style as the one that's on the Strife. The jam door is in the same spot. Only difference is that it doesn't lift up. It actually slides back. So in some ways, it's better than the Strife already. And the biggest difference with this blaster from the Strife is the fact that there's no end strike barrel lug. Instead, there's just this big muzzle on the front of it. And there is a 10 dart cylinder on it rather than the magazine fed system. And just like every blaster from this generation, they painted both sides mostly. For some reason, they did not paint the barricade text in black. And I don't know why, because the barricade text on this side looks really good, so it doesn't make sense why they wouldn't do it on the other side, because this was back in the day when Hasbro gave a crap about what the left side of their blaster looked like, but they didn't paint the barricade on the other side. With that said, they did paint the silver details and the nerf and the end strike, so I'll still give them credit for that. Thanks for painting both sides. Let's talk about ergonomics. This blaster really just has a main grip and it is the end strike style grip right here. And it feels really, really good on this blaster. It's hard to determine whether or not this grip feels better on this style of blaster than the Strife grip feels on the Strife. Since I mean, this and the Strife when it comes to size and shape and stuff like that, they're basically interchangeable. So honestly, I would kind of prefer this grip on the Strife. If I had to choose between this grip and the Elite grip on the Strife, I would prefer this grip. I think that this is a very good grip and it really fits the barricade well. The finger troils are just so good. I've talked about this grip before and it's honestly one of my five favorite grips. In fact, this might actually be the second place for my favorite grip. This is a really good grip design and I really wish they kept it. So how does this blaster work? Well, bear with me here because I don't actually have the darts that are designed to use this blaster with. It is supposed to be using and strike Whistler darts. I'm just using full lengths. There is a difference because Whistler darts have a wider head and thus the crush on these flywheels is insanely wide. So it's not getting the best grip on the darts, but that is something you can fix and I will address that near the end. I'm just saying here because the firing demo is going to show this thing in the worst state that it can possibly be shown in. But with all that said, How's the blaster actually work? Well, it is a 10 dart revolver. So you can put in up to 10 darts into the cylinder. And then only on the left hand side, there is an on off switch that you can easily press with your thumb. You pull it back to turn the flywheels on. You push it forward to turn the flywheels off. And once it's on, you can pull the trigger all the way down. It's semi-automatic. So you just pull it once to fire. It sounds incredibly sad. Yeah, it sounds incredibly sad. These flywheels and motors really don't sound like they should be able to fling a dart at all, but they're flinging darts. 
and they're flinging darts rather hard considering how these flywheels and motors sound, especially the fact that the batteries that I'm using aren't really the best, but it wouldn't matter because it's not like this thing is going to have the most dramatic performance change having brand new batteries, which is why I really don't care. Because usually with flywheel reviews, I would want to put brand new batteries in before the firing demo. But with blasters like this where performance doesn't really matter and the firing demo is mainly just to show you how the blaster functions, it's not really night and day. It's just shooting a blaster. Let's talk about the triggers before we actually get it into the firing demo. The trigger on this blaster is actually very, very smooth. It's got a very nice pull to it. It's pretty crisp considering it's one of the cylinder triggers, so it's not going to be nearly as smooth as something like a strife trigger. But honestly, considering how much stuff the trigger is doing, it's actually doing pretty well. On to the firing demo. I'm not even going to bother to turn the SMT on because I don't think the darts are going to get that far. best performance I've ever seen in my life. So, that looked unimpressive to say the least. I know, because the firing and performance of this blaster and even the stockade after it, I just did not see the appeal in this blaster at all. I didn't have any interest in picking it up for the longest time because in my opinion, well, why would I have this thing when the Strife, it's the exact same thing, except it actually has a rev trigger instead of a stupid on-off switch, and it takes magazines instead of a 10-dart cylinder that you can't even switch out. Yeah, that's the truth. This blaster uses an on-off switch, which is pretty much inferior to rev triggers in almost every way, and it uses a cylinder which you can't swap out, so you're limited to 10 darts. So what's the big deal? There's something special about it being a revolver. It feels more like a pistol. And the idea of a 10 dart flywheel revolver is really cool. It's something that you can't just look past. It is a very nice concept. And honestly, this is one of the most enjoyable blasters just to play around with, even if the performance absolutely sucks. But when I said this was the original Strife, I meant this was the original Strife. This is what got all the mods back in the day. And this thing got some pretty cool slamming mods for it. Plenty of mods that I absolutely intend to do for this blaster because honestly, I would love to take this to competitions. I would love to use this thing unironically as a holstered sidearm that I could just have as a 10 dart flywheel pistol. You turn it on, you shoot the 10 darts, you don't have to use the rep trigger, you just turn it on when you're ready to use it, you turn it off when you're done, you shove it back in your holster and you go back to using your primary. There's something special about that. This blaster does fill a niche that I didn't know needed to be filled. And it's one of those things where you don't realize you need it until you have it and then you realize you've been missing out on it your entire life. So do I recommend that you guys look into a barricade? Yes, if you either plan on modifying it to make it performance worthy and take it to competitions like I plan on doing, or you just genuinely really like the concept of a flywheel revolver. Though in that case, I might recommend the stockade instead, even though that has factually inferior motors to this in every stretch of the imagination, the stockade is hitting 70 FPS out of the box. If you don't care about performance though, I would honestly go with the original barricade over the stockade because the motors are better. And genuinely, this is a very moddable blaster. You can do a lot of mods to the barricade. You just need some time and you need to be able to sit down and work with it for a while. With all that said, thanks for watching. Bye.